Hi, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to lesson one of AWS um, Kinesis 101. Um, as we covered in the intro lesson, we're going to build a real-time streaming app um, over the course of four lessons to get more familiar with the AWS Kinesis services and build up that knowledge base heading towards certification. Um, I'm Johnny Chivers. I'm a data engineer um, by day trade, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, with over 10 years experience working in data. I'm a professionally um, certified architect in AWS, and I actually have five certifications altogether. Um, so today, we're going to look at lesson one over here. Uh, this diagram, if you're not familiar with it, I drew it in lesson zero, uh, the introduction. So go have a look and come back when we're ready to go. So today, we're going to do the Kinesis Data Generator and the Kinesis Data Streams. So we're going to use the Kinesis Data Generator to create data, and then we're going to place that onto a stream. So first, a wee bit of theory before we dive in. This will take a minute or two, and then anything I miss theory-wise, we'll pick it up once we're on the console actually building the app. So quickly, in theory, what is Kinesis Data Streams? Kinesis Data Streams allows us to collect in real time, or near real time, vast amount of data, such as Internet of Things devices, logs, stock data, um, any type of data you can really think of, and allows us to capture that on a stream in real time so that it can be consumed by many apps. So if you think about traditional architecture in terms of data, it might come in in batch form where it waits, you know, 5, 10, or daily for that data to reach downstream sources. The idea of the stream is that it gets rid of that kind of messy infrastructure of things talking all over the place. Everything hits a centralized place known as a bus in this term of stream, and then everything consumes off that in real time, bringing you better data that's been quality assured from one central source. So Kinesis Streams does that. And to do that, what we need to do is put that data onto a stream. And that's known as a data producer. And that data producer can put its data onto that stream in a two, two ways in, in, in AWS. One is using the SDK, and one is using the Kinesis Producer Library. So the SDK is a very simplistic way. Um, it calls the Kinesis API. It can also be used for managing Kinesis. But in terms of putting data onto the stream, it can put data onto the stream and it can use put records or put record. As it says, put record is where you're putting a single record or a single piece of data on and put records is where you're putting multiple pieces of data on. Um, very simplistic. So aside from the SDK, there's the Kinesis Producer Library, which is a Java library, freely available um, to, uh, to install. And that gives you more control over the put records. The put record, it can back off. It has a retry mechanism. So if it fails to reach the stream at any point, it can put the data back onto the stream. So in terms of the streams themselves, they consist of shards. And the shard is the base throughput unit that Kinesis used to measure it. So one shard allows you to put one megabit of data on per second or a thousand put records. So if I need to put 2,000 record, 2,000 requests onto a stream, in a second, I need two shards. If I need to put two megabits of data per second onto the stream, I need two shards. If I need to put 10,000 put requests in one second, like I'm streaming a lot of Internet of Things devices from around smart office block, then I need 10 shards. Um, shards can actually be increased dynamically. So if you start with one shard and you think, oh, I don't have enough shards here, I need five. Um, then you can increase those shards once the stream's up and running. So it's not a finite amount. You can also decrease shards if you're using too much. There are some caveats around that, like you can't decrease shards more than what, uh, less than what you started with. So just be careful. So it's good to get the sizing correct straight away, but you do have that built in comfort blanket that if you get it wrong, you can go back and make it larger. So under the shards, we put records. So the Kinesis Producer Library or the SDKs, Take a record and put it onto the shard. And to do that, it uses a partition key to pick what shard to put onto. So you should always have more partition keys than you have shards. And what that does is avoid hot sharding. So hot sharding is a really important thing to avoid where if you have a partition key that all your data is using and you have five shards, it means that everything's going to that one shard and the other four shards aren't being used. So that's to avoid that, then pick something that's kind of higher cardinality than your shards and then look at it to make sure that it's being evenly distributed across the amount of shards on your stream. Um, so that's enough of the producer library on shards. Let's jump into the console. Let's create our Kinesis data generator, and then let's create our stream, and then let's connect the two things together and get that data onto the stream. Let's go. 
Okay, so I've just logged into the AWS console, and the first thing we're going to do in lesson one is navigate to Kinesis. So if we just type in Kinesis um, in front of us and we hit enter, we'll be, we'll be brought to the um, Kinesis streams. So as explained, there's three kind of Kinesis streams. Uh, there's data streams, firehose, and data analytics. We're going to create a data stream. So the first thing on the diagram, uh, if we have a quick little look at it, I'll just bring it in. Um, the first thing, we, if you look at the diagram, is that we have uh, a Kinesis data stream being fed by the Kinesis data generator. So we're going to create a Kinesis data stream. So the first thing then we're going to use is Kinesis data streams. We'll use the other two types of streams in the next um, lessons after this as we build up our real-time streaming app. Um, so don't worry, we're going to get exposure for Firehose and Data Analytics, as I mentioned on the intro video. So that's create a stream. I'm working out of Ireland region, so it's really important you pick a region. Um, I advise working out of either uh, US East 1 or one of the European regions for this um, because I've tested them in both and they work. Um, so I need a name for my stream. Um, so the purpose of this, I'm just going to call it real time stream uh, Kinesis data anal or data streams actually data streams. So I'm going to name them um, corresponding to the service I'm using. So as we build up the two types of other stream, then we can differentiate as we go along. Um, you can call this anything you want. Just remember what you call a name. So explain and explain that at the start of the video. Shard is how. Um, you, you put data onto the stream and it um, controls the throughput. We only need one shard for this, so you get one megabit per second or a thousand records per second, and then you can read two megabits per second off. Simple as that. Create stream. Uh, this usually takes about 30 seconds. Um, there we go. Stream's active. Easy as that. So in the description, um, or on the GitHub page that also, I've also linked, um, there's a link to the Kinesis Data Generator. So as I explained in the intro video, um, we're gonna use the Kinesis Data Generator as our producer. So we're gonna use it to put data onto our stream. This is a free AWS app. Um, and it's great because it actually just writes data for us in these kind of videos or when we're learning with Kinesis and we don't have to worry about actually connecting it to uh, Internet of Things device or creating our own data. So if you click help, um, you can see a list of regions that it's available in. So make sure you're using one of these regions. Make sure you're in, um, in, in that region is where you created your Kinesis stream and make sure we're going to, so you can see like the US East one and two are there. I'm in the Ireland region, but the European regions are there. So safe as houses work in the US, the EU, um, and you can follow along. I'm in Ireland if you want to follow along exactly. So we want to create a new user using, uh, cloud formation. And what this is going to do, it's a template and it's going to spin up um, the Kinesis data generator for the background is a web UI inside our AWS uh, account. It costs a few pennies when we run it. It's not much whatsoever um, and it really saves a lot of hassle. This always catches people out. It defaults to US East too. So make sure you reselect uh, the region you're working in. So I'm in Ireland. Make sure you reselect Ireland because we need to spin this up in the same region as our Kinesis data generator. Perfect. Then we hit next and you need to give this thing a username and a password so i'm just going to give mine a username oh your username is coming up there i'll uh, have to blank that when i'm editing uh, and then give it a password that you're going to remember so i'm just going to name it after me and simple as that um that's fine for now um you need to give it permissions to spin up. I have a full access policy ready to go. Give it a policy that you chose. And then just hit next. That is everything. Accept the conditions and create stack. So really just remember, give it the username and a password you're going to remember. And then make sure that you also uh, create a username on top of that. Okay, just keep it refresh and then eventually you'll see create completed. That took about 40 seconds. Next thing we need to do is go to outputs and then we need to click on the link provided and we sign in using the username and password that we entered on the CloudFormation template. And then if you select the region that you're working in, so I'm in EU North 1, uh, oh no, I'm not, I'm in EU West 1. Uh, your stream then should come up that you've created. Uh, set this to one, so it means it's going to send one record per second. And what I've actually done on GitHub in the link below is put a template up 
and this template then is going to become um, the data that we're going to send so it's just the first name last name ID and IP that it's sending um, we're going to close that just to test and then you hit send and that's the data starting to be sent to our Kinesis data stream so on the data stream itself if I go into the data stream um, and I go to monitoring it takes a couple of seconds for the records to start appearing but what we should start to see eventually after about two or five after five minutes is counts appearing um, on these dashboards I'm just gonna go down to the last hour I'm gonna pause the video here and then I'm gonna pick it up in five minutes time okay I gave that about two minutes there just to let CloudWatch catch up so if I click now on one minute intervals and I hit that refresh button a couple of times and um, we scroll down to incoming data you can see there that it's starting to appear just right there um, incoming data limits incoming bytes that are currently coming so I'm nowhere near my limit which is the top and then that really tiny dot on the bottom there is where my uh, bytes currently are um, so and as you can see there incoming data sum as well so that's the start of the data being put on the stream um, so that's the end of today's lesson. We've created the Kinesis Data Generator. We're putting data on our stream. In the next lesson, we're going to cover consumers. We're going to take the data off the stream that we're currently moving, and then we're going to put that into DynamoDB. Then we're going to take this data in lesson three, and we're going to use Firehose to put it in the NS3 bucket. And then in lesson four, we're going to use Kinesis Data Analytics to take this data that's currently streaming and then analyze it in real time. So the last thing to do today is actually just to stop sending data so it doesn't cost us any money. I'm going to leave these tabs open so I have them for lesson um, two when we pick up and then lesson three and lesson four ready to go. So thanks for watching today. Um, as usual, all these resources are available for free on my website, johnnychevers.co.uk. I'll put everything on GitHub as well. And I hope you uh, found it enjoyable and you'll join me in the next lesson where we'll start putting this data into DynamoDB. Thanks.